Episode 25 – Social Credit, Government Spending and Taxation We are often told that high levels of taxation, plus the continual expansion of governmental power and its accompanying bureaucracies, are necessary for the smooth operation of a modern society. But what if none of that is true? According to the social credit analysis of Major C. H. Douglas, not to be confused with Chinese social credit, taxation could and should be substantially less and governments could and should be substantially smaller than they both are at present. To begin with, the liberation of the economy from artificial constraints via the introduction of an accurate financial system would drastically reduce the public debt loads at all levels of government. When the economy as a whole can consume whatever it produces without having to go into debt to do so, the need for public debt is drastically reduced. As a result of this reduction, there should be a corresponding reduction in the taxes necessary to service those public debts i.e. to cover debt repayments and interest charges. The introduction of a national dividend in a modern economy, in conjunction with compensated prices, should also render many government social programs redundant, or at least reduce the need for them. Universal entitlements such as child and family allowances, unemployment benefits, public pensions, disability benefits, welfare and so forth might be replaceable with national dividend payments. The deductions and other taxes that are supposed to cover these programs would thenceforth be eliminated. These two major changes to the fiscal life of governments i.e. the obsolescence of ever-increasing public indebtedness and of many of the social programs will result in the reduction in, if not the entire elimination of, various bureaucracies that are dedicated to 1. The servicing of public debts 2. The implementation, administration and monitoring of different social programs and 3. The collection of taxes and the penalisation of evaders this purging of the civil service, most of its current membership perform jobs that are not objectively justified in light of the physical facts of our productive capacity, would likewise lower the costs of government operations even further. In these ways, the introduction of the social credit monetary reform is likely to do away with much of the taxation with which we are familiar, namely the illegitimate, unnecessary and counterproductive forms. It would also allow governments to reinvent themselves as smaller, more streamlined and service-minded organisations that strictly follow the rule of law, while operating within clearly defined constitutional limitations. Naturally, insofar as governments would continue to provide certain public goods and services in a social credit commonwealth, taxation in one form or another would continue to exist. While it is certainly true that taxation could be eliminated entirely under social credit by using a certain proportion of the compensatory debt-free money earmarked for the compensated price and the national dividend to fund government activities in full, thereby distributing the resultant goods and services to the public for free, this would take some control over credit away from the individual and re-centralise it in the hands of the group. It is absolutely crucial that individual citizens exercise some real control, either directly or indirectly, through their elected representatives, over the amounts and purposes for which financial credit is to be employed by government. To this end, taxation might be expected to take two different forms in a social credit commonwealth. Use a fees for all those government services that benefit some small or limited section of the population, such as driver's licenses, hunting permits, boating fees, etc., and a universal sales tax to cover those day-to-day -day operations of government that benefit everyone. Parliament, National Defence, the operations of the National Credit Office, the Post Office, public medical insurance, and so forth. It should be noted that Douglas vehemently opposed direct methods of taxation, such as income taxes, capital gains taxes, inheritance taxes and property taxes, etc., which he thought crude, complicated, inequitable and or tyrannical, and opted instead for indirect methods of taxation, such as sales taxes. 
a universal sales tax would represent a small rise in the price level of goods, which had been adjusted below its present levels by the national discount. This animated series was sponsored by the Clifford Hugh Douglas Institute for the study and promotion of social credit. For more information on Douglas Social Credit, please visit socred.org or socialcredit.com.au. Be sure to like this video and please subscribe to our channel.